Hey folks, welcome back to Real Estate Investing Unmasked. Today we're going to talk about step number nine and how to buy a house. And that's when you get to go back and renegotiate with the seller based on the information you learned in the home inspection or in the home appraisal. You just got your home inspection back. That doesn't necessarily mean you go back and renegotiate everything. However, if you do find some things in that home inspection that look like major items, that's probably when you're going to want to ask a credit from the seller. If you find small items in that home inspection, you may go back to the seller and say, hey, would you repair these things before we close escrow as part of our escrow process? Now, when it comes to those major things, you don't necessarily want to ask the seller to repair those things because they may not have your best interest at heart. They may rush the job, so to speak, to get something finished just so that it's ready for your walkthrough or for your final inspection. So it may be in your best interest if you find something that you want to negotiate for that you ask for a credit when you purchase the property. What that will do is that actually will diminish how much money you need to come to the table with in order to close the deal. Now, one major thing to keep in mind when you want to go back and renegotiate with the seller is the seller is under absolutely no obligation whatsoever to either give you a credit or to repair the thing that you're asking to have repaired. That's important to know because that's something you can negotiate or renegotiate over. This is a process, this is the one time in the contract for the most part when you can actually renegotiate the whole contract based on the information you found. If you found a cracked foundation and you don't want to deal with that, walk away. If you found an issue with the plumbing system and you can't deal with that, walk away. If you think the HVAC system is, is something you just can't handle, walk away from the deal. Out of all the transactions that take place, 6% of people walk away based on the home inspection or based on the home appraisal. So that's a lot of people that just walk away. Hey, I'm done. That is what your contingency is for, is so that if you get in a bind like that, you can say, I'm not gonna deal with this, I'm out. Now, this is the opportunity for you to also get some down payment assistance. Quite often, when I'm in a contract for something, there will be something in the house that you can renegotiate for. For instance, things that people find that they renegotiate for are electrical issues, mold, window or door issues, asbestos, chimney issues, HES like termites or mice, roofing issues, foundation issues, or plumbing issues. There are a lot of issues that could pop up that could cause you to renegotiate this contract. And the seller, they've bought a house before. That's why they are where they are, unless they inherited it. They know that there may be some issues with that. Even if they haven't been living in the property, they know there may be some issues that pop up. And when a home inspection goes through, they're gonna find that there may be something that's been neglected. Matter of fact, the majority of American household, American homeowners do not provide the proper upkeep of their equipment. The majority, they just don't know how to. It may be that they forget to change their air filter often enough and it causes the HVAC system to be overly burdened and ends up dying prematurely. As a matter of fact, if the issue is large enough, your lender may not even lend you the money you need to buy the house without having something fixed. So if it's a major enough issue that the lender will not lend on it, you may have to have the seller either fix the problem or allow you to hire the contractor to fix the problem. And it could be that you can have the seller provide the funds and you provide the contractor. That is a possibility. Anything is a possibility. It's all under negotiation. Try to keep in mind what the seller is going through. When you're going back to the seller and saying, I want you to give me some kind of credit or repair something or lower the price because the appraisal didn't come through. Think of what the seller is going through on their side. They want to sell this house. They want to get it over with. They don't want to go through another hassle. They don't want to start all over again with somebody else because in reality, the next person they start with, they're going to have to disclose whatever you disclose to them from the home inspection. They're going to have to tell people that they know about this now. So then they have to start all over again from scratch, having to tell people what's wrong with the property. It's not a good spot to be in. So a lot of sellers want to avoid that. Once they're in the process of going through this, they will negotiate with you and try to make it so you buy their property, but they also want to be reasonable. So it could be, for instance, you come into a house and you say, hey, my home inspector said this carpet hasn't been changed in 20 years. It really needs to be changed. I don't think that you had dropped the price of the house to compensate for the carpet change. It's gonna cost about $10,000 to change the carpet. Would you give me a $10,000 credit for the carpet being replaced? And the seller could be like, no way, that's crazy. I'll, I, and But here's when they can come back. I'll give you $5,000 credit, fine. 
I know the carpet's not great. I haven't done my maintenance on it. I'll give you $5,000 for it. Or you know what, screw you. I'll just shampoo the carpet. That should be good enough. And then it's up to you to come back and renegotiate that. And it could be that if the seller says, I won't give you 10,000, but I'll give you 5,000. Sometimes that's good enough to say, you know what? You got a deal, let's move forward. And then that will act as a credit toward your down payment in the end. Another thing to keep in mind is when you are asking to have something fixed, your tastes and the seller's tastes may be completely different. So you wanna make sure that you are very specific on the things that you want if you're gonna have something replaced. For instance, if you say, no, I wanna have the carpet replaced, I'd like a $10,000 credit toward that, and the seller says, no, but I will go ahead and replace the carpet, you wanna make sure that in your negotiation that you get are the one that gets to pick out the carpet and the company that installs it. Because any of those preferences could cause major differences between your taste and the seller's taste. And one last thing, before you negotiate with the seller on what they can give you as a credit or what they can fix, make sure you talk to a handyman. Call a handyman and say, hey, this is what I'm looking at. This is about how many square feet it's gonna affect, or this is the type of machine, or this is how big the house is. So for instance, if, if it's the HVAC system, say, hey, the house is a 2,000 square foot home, four beds, two baths, whatever the situation may be, and say, about how much would you think it would cost to replace an HVAC system if the air conditioner and heater is a combo unit in the attic, right? Something similar to that, so they have some way to say, well, I can't tell you exactly how much it's gonna be, but it could be somewhere between $5,000 and $10,000. So they say, okay, fine, I'll split it down the middle. I'll go to the seller and ask him for a $7,500 credit. And that's a reasonable request. Now they may say, hey, the, the system is great. It puts out ice cold air conditioning during the summertime and puts great heat out during the wintertime. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And you say, that's fine. On the home inspection, it says that it, it has had deferred maintenance for way too long and it probably needs to be replaced. And if that's the case, you can say, you know what, maybe $7,500 is too much for you, how about $5,000? And they may say, fine, you know what, we'll give you the $5,000 and let's close this deal. That's so, right, so any of those things, make sure you talk to a contractor if you can and kind of get an estimate about how much it's gonna be. Don't try to wing it. You can ask your realtor, sometimes your realtor will be educated enough to know what's going on as far as prices are concerned the going prices, but I would say the person with the most knowledge on what the prices are at the moment is a contractor who actually does the work. So call up a few people, get a couple ideas of how much it's gonna cost. Besides, when you do that, you're already setting yourself up for having contacts so that when you do wanna change this, you've got somebody to go to, all right? Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments section down below or reach out to me on my website at www.watchbobonyoutube.com and I'll be able to help you out. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. We got two more of these.